Christmas Day has come and gone. Lots of activity, perhaps, maybe lots of stress in your household. There was maybe good and bad. Certainly preparation and planning that went into the day, perhaps. Schedules and events and worship here in the worship center. It was good. It was grand. It was glorious. It's the most beautiful time of the year, at least some people say. Difficult, though, for others who are dealing with loss and change. In a season of tradition where things should be the same, they're not the same for some of us. And as you well know, it's a season of excess, and that can sometimes be good and sometimes be bad, but now we're beginning to move on to the next thing, to the new year. And the calendar page pulls off to reveal, well, it reveals another day, and another day, and time keeps moving forward. And I don't know about you, but sometimes you're kind of in an assessment phase. Well, did we have a good Christmas? Have you ever asked that question or reflected on it for yourself? For sometimes, when you ask that of other people, it's kind of just a polite piece of conversation intended to get to the next item on our list. But I don't know about you, but sometimes I overanalyze things. So sometimes I have to pause before I answer that question. Well, did I have a good Christmas? Well, what, what does that mean exactly? In, in what terms do you ask that question? Do you mean the presents that were given and received? Okay, we, there were presents given and received. Did food that I wanted get prepared and eaten? Well, certainly, yes, maybe more than I needed to eat. But was there the right combination of sleepless nights coming up to it and naps during the day? Okay, check and check. I guess it was a pretty good Christmas. And a good Advent season, too, the, the season of preparing for it, the for the coming and the Christmas Eve celebrations, they were all good. And it was busy and exhausting and creative and challenging and pleasing. I had a good Christmas. But I wonder, what was it like for you? Did you have a good Christmas? Do you ever pause when asked that question? And why do we wonder, why do we have to consider before responding? Sometimes it's because we uh, have missed the moment. We sometimes skip over the part where Jesus is born, and we realize that we're still on the way somehow. These candles that were all lit in which we've been preparing, well, wait a minute, Did, did Jesus come? Did I miss it somehow in the middle? How do I make sure that I haven't missed Christmas, that it has indeed been good? Our gospel reading for today is the only childhood story that we have in all four of the gospels. Uh, There are some 30 years of life for Jesus that's reduced to just a few stories of Jesus as an infant that are just enough to drive us to wonder what exactly was going on. And then there's this one story of an incident when Jesus is 12 years old. That is it. That's the whole story of Jesus growing up. Well, did he have a good growing up years? Well, we don't really know too much about it. It's certainly not recorded. What kind of kid was Jesus anyway? Did he use his tremendous powers to take care of the chores when he was assigned to to the dishes or to bring in the water? Well, could he do miracles yet? It may be that Luke included this story to help us know that Jesus always understood that he was the Son of God. And he knew it. Jesus' family trip to Jerusalem was a regular thing. They went to Jerusalem every year for the Passover. You remember that this was a sign of a truly devout Jew. It was to go to Jerusalem during the Passover. It was part of the law that all Jews who lived outside of Jerusalem at least one time during their life would come back during Passover. Now, not everyone made that trip every year. However, um, everyone tried to do it at least once in their lifetime. But Luke says that Mary and Joseph did it every year, and that's pretty impressive. But in one sense, it means that this trip wasn't something special. It wasn't out of the ordinary. It was something that happened annually for them. And of course, it was unique, distinct, like Christmas Eve worship perhaps is special, memorable, but it happens every year, particular, but not unusual or unexpected. They probably were planning on having a good trip to Jerusalem. And they did it many times. And maybe this is why they didn't do a great job of keeping track of Jesus. They traveled in a large group, uh, likely for safety and for fellowship and for shared responsibilities. And usually when in large public groups like this, the family grouping was secondary to the grouping of the community of faith. 
The men usually led the way and some distance from the women and the children that were often lagging behind. So on a, this type of trip, when Jesus was 12, perhaps uh, Jesus was moving between the children and the adults, not quite an adult, but maybe not feeling quite like a child. Maybe he rotated who he was traveling with, sometimes with mom and dad and sometimes um, with, uh, on his own. And so perhaps Joseph in the front assumed that he was with Mary, and Mary, who was a little bit further back, thinking that Jesus was further ahead or perhaps further behind, and it wasn't until they stopped after the first day's traveling and found each other and counted heads that they discovered that, well, they were both wrong. Jesus was nowhere to be found. Now, whatever their trip, however good their trip had been up until this point, it was perhaps no longer very good. Now, it's no fun to lose a child. I have managed to lose track of John and Anne over the years at times, maybe not lost, but lost track of them at a park or on an elevator at a hotel. Uh, And something, this uh, feeling in your stomach when you realize, oh, wait a minute, I don't know where my child is. Um, And I can't imagine what this must have been like for Mary and for Joseph as they realize we've gone a whole day's journey. This uh, sense of panic that they must have feeling, I just have maybe felt just a little bit of that. And Luke says they went to search. Well, of course they went to search. But did they go immediately? Did they travel through the night and into the following day? And the text says that they searched for three days, and sometimes we get stuck in whether, well, was that three days from when they left Jerusalem, including where they were? Or does that include the travel back? Does they go on a day's journey? Or maybe it doesn't matter a lot. I know that three days gone is a long time, regardless of how you count it. And it is no wonder that they are angry when they find Jesus at the temple. Do you hear Mary's words? Child, why have you treated us like this? Listen, your father and I have been worried. We've been looking for you. And I can imagine, you can imagine perhaps not only the tone in her voice, but maybe also the look in her eyes that she had as a mother can only give to a child when that child knows that something has gone wrong. Mary is in a mood and rightfully so. And Jesus responds maybe a little bit unhelpfully, I would say, in this situation. He says, well, why were you looking for me? Come on, Jesus, you've been gone. We don't know where you are. And didn't you know it was necessary for me to be in my father's house? And these questions we find, he responds to Mary, but we also find that they are for us. The second question, of course, reminds Mary and us that Jesus knows that he is God's son. Didn't you know that I was to be in my father's house? He was there in the temple. He reminds us and his mother that somehow he is on a mission to reconcile the world to God. And the first question seems rhetorical for Mary. Does it really need to be answered? Well, Jesus, we were going home and we couldn't find you. That's pretty clear. But that first question may be most important for you and for me, for us today. Jesus asks us, why are you looking for me? Why are we looking for Jesus? What do we want from him? Do we want him to come and to be where we are? Do we want him to go and do things that we have on our to-do list? Or do we search for Jesus so that we can go and be where he is, so that we can join him in God's house, so that we can be about God's work in the world and set our things aside, if even for just a few moments? Whose things are we most concerned about this Sunday after Christmas? Our things? God's things? Did you have a good Christmas Why are you searching for me, Jesus asks. The good news is that when we search for Jesus, we will find him. So even if you feel a little bit lost, or you look back and you wonder, did I miss Christmas somehow? Know that when we come to God, God's love is already there for us, and God is ready to welcome us home, even if we feel a little bit lost from time to time. Will you pray with me? Oh God, thank you for your presence with us. Help us to consider why we're following you or why we're looking for you. Help us to be aware of your love, to be strengthened by your presence, and to face all the days ahead 
and the knowledge that you walk with us. Give us strength, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.